let's uh, start then. Uh, good morning, uh, everyone. Uh, my name is uh, Peter van Edeveld, and I will talk about, with you about quality management. I recently uh, talked to my mother, and uh, uh, she asked always, what kind of job do you have? And I tell to, to her that I'm involved in quality management. And then she always asks, the quality of what? And that is a, that's a good point, and I will go into that in my uh, presentation. I will answer in these questions, uh, in, the, in, in, the, in this presentation, uh, three questions. That is, what is quality? What are quality areas? What is a, which is a new concept, it's a non-existing expression. And uh, to conclude with an answer on what is quality management. I am a member of uh, uh, my favorite uh, social network is LinkedIn. I'm a member of that, uh, that network. And somebody asked in a discussion group, uh, what is quality? And he got a huge number of answers on that question. And I will show you a few of them. They say, for example, quality is not an act, it is a habit. It's to do the, right, the things right from the first time. Quality are, quality are tools and techniques. Look at the language. Quality is a tool. How can it be a tool? Quality itself is just a word, which is obvious true, but it, it has only no hardly any meaning. Quality is a perceptual and somewhat sub subjective attribute. It's an approach. It's value for money. Well, I conclude that there's a big confusion among experts uh, about what, uh, what quality is. And the problem is, if you if this is the definition of quality, you can't manage it at all. It's not concrete enough. So, what is the alternative? Um, I say quality is always associated with something, as my mother says. Huh? Quality of what? And I call this something an object. And everything can be an object. This chair, this, this chair is an ob object, this table is an object. The, the, my presentation is an object, the laptop is an object, the building is an object. Everything that has attributes, that is in my, uh, my, uh, my opinion, in my model, an object. And I will take, for example, uh, uh, coffee as an object. So what is the quality of coffee? The coffee has a of four uh, important attributes. That is color, taste, aroma, how does it smell, and the temperature of coffee. That determines in great, uh, to a great extent the quality of coffee. And if we take that to a more abstract level, you, can, you could say that quality is the set of attributes of an object. And that can be managed. You can manage the color, the taste, the room temperature. But in Statistics Netherlands there are of course more objects than only coffee. Um, there are objects like uh, statistical output, processes, data, staff, uh, information system, etc. And all these objects should be managed. The quality of each object should be managed. Otherwise, the output would be will not be good enough. And there are far more attributes than are only color, taste, aroma, and temperature, like effectiveness, efficiency, uh, availability, integrity, etc. There are dozens of of attributes you can imagine. And now we'll introduce you the, 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 that new concept, it, which is called quality area. 
and that this concept, this this concept, the quality area is a combination of an object and one attribute. So the temperature of coffee is an, is a, is an example of a quality area, but coffee is the object and temperature is the attribute, the attribute. But if, if you look at other objects, for example staff, uh, this object has a different set of attributes, of course, like competence, vitality, satisfaction, integrity, availability, mobility. And I will show you some more examples, like methodology. I should, show, should say not methodology, but methods, statistical methods. Uh, you can distinguish sounds of methods, complexity, clarity, robustness, applicability, efficiency. And this object is very important for statistics in Statistics Netherlands, the quality of statistical output, and it has nine uh, attributes, which I, which I will not explain now. What are the advantages of distinguishing uh, quality areas? The point is you can have flexibility in choice of quality areas. Which quality areas do you want to manage? So you can and you can focus on one quality area at a time. And there are also relations between quality areas, and you can make it visible. Um, a very important relation between quality areas in statistics is between timeliness of, of statistics and accuracy. The more time you have to produce a, a, a figure, the, the more accurate it will be, but the um, people want fast, uh, to have fast statistics. And they don't want to wait an hour, for, uh, one year for, uh, for uh, the, the consumer price index, for example. We want it after a month. But the point is now, how, to, how can you manage uh, these quality areas? There are, well, there are standard steps for each quality area. There are 16, 16 of them. The, the left ones, the, 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 the air one to eight, uh, are the most important ones. I won't, uh, I will explain, uh, I will give an example of them. And, uh, not explaining here. The, and uh, yeah, at the right side are less important steps. If I take temperature of, as, of coffee as an example, then it is important to first define what the quality area is. Uh, well, here it's simple, that uh, the de degrees of Celsius of the coffee is the definition. Um, second point is, uh, who is responsible for the temperature of coffee? And in our case, it is facility management who runs the coffee machines. But there are also other parties in involved, like the supplier who does the maintenance on the coffee machine, and the users who report failures. And what is the importance of uh, temperature of coffee? Well, it's small. It's uh, not important for to uh, in comparison of the to uh, to meet the goals of uh, statistics networks. What are the relations with other quality areas? Well, it influences productivity and satisfaction of staff, and it has the also uh, influences the taste of coffee. If the temperature is too high, it will be bitter. What are the requirements of coffee? Well, it must be 82 degrees Celsius, and if it's higher, the, what I said before, temperate, the, 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 the alcohol, alkaloids will solve in the water. What are possible problems with the temperature of coffee? Well, that is simple, it can be too high or too low. And what are the possible causes of the problems? Well, that the machine is not properly adjusted, and what are the effects of that is that staff complain and the productivity will be in decline. And these steps, six 
seven, eight is a small risk analysis, which is incorporated in quality management. There is also a temperature of coffee has also a history. Temperature was up. The temperature of coffee was always right. I will step to the measures number thirteen. This is the most important step. You have to take action in order to control the temperature of coffee. And this has been done to have, there are some measures taken, like there is a maintenance contract, there is a customer service, you, if, there is a, if there is a failure, failure, you can use the internet uh, entry of the, uh, of the supplier. And there are more machines in the building as a backup of the coffee machine, so you can do it in one. The point is then, we ask the question, are we in control of the temperature of coffee? And the answer is yes. <coughs> so there is no need to take extra measures to control the temperature of coffee. So what is quality management? It's quite simple. You choose one or more quality areas. The second step is that you analyze each quality area and the third step is determine which additional action, actions or measures should be taken. Well, thank you for your attention and the questions are most welcome. Um,